I've always liked the idea of touring by bicycle, but about four years ago, sadly had to accept that advancing years have made crawling around on wet grass to start the day after a night under canvas no longer constituted quality vacation time. My fully equipped Urbanite Tourer was now more bike than I needed, so regretfully I sold it and bought a tiny A-like 400 camper, which could be towed behind my Mazda Tribute. Although little more than a tin tent, the level of sleeping comfort available, compared with under canvas, was positively decadent. During the day, it could be reconfigured into a living room. Well, sort of. I now gave some thought to building up a lighter replacement bike with more sporting handling and performance than the somewhat ponderous Tora, but still capable of carrying some payload if required. I was fortunate for a nominal sum to locate a 1987-ish Norco Monterey, a popular sports Tora design which featured an unusually good quality Tange 900 double-butted chromoly frame. Its somewhat mediocre array of components had enabled the price to be kept below $400. The heavy one-piece crank set here was typical of the cost engineering employed, with chain wheels actually riveted in place. It would make an effective hatchet to decapitate or inflict other mortal wounds, but contribute little to this project. The low-end Shimano derailleur had an excessive amount of play in one bearing and was just not acceptable, so it was discarded too. I had a collection of Campinola parts to hand from previous projects, so I replaced the crank set with a 1980 Campy record assembly and dug out some old Campinola record single caliper brakes from the same source as the crank set and bolted them on too. To satisfy a long held curiosity, I replaced the original drop bars with a Nitto moustache set. In addition to supporting my camping adventures, if things were satisfactory, I decided to evolve the bike into an all weather, all season general utility bike. I therefore released the purse strings to realise a long-held ambition and ordered an 8-speed Shimano Nexus internal hub. The installation required the spreading of the rear dropouts by about 6mm and I just used the method described in Sheldon Brown's website on the subject of frame spacing. It's quite straightforward. The wheel was built up with a new black Mavic Open Sport rim and installation, although completely different from a cassette, was easy enough. In this configuration, I put quite a few kilometres on it. This included the support of my A-Lite 400 expeditions, as had been the intention. Happily, everything worked fine. The bike rode beautifully, except that I found the existing stem was too long for the moustache bars. It was also a bit of a bear to load into the back of the car, but otherwise everything was fine. I was sufficiently encouraged to complete the evolutionary process. Initially, I, I had intended to replace the somewhat strange white and violet colour scheme, but found that most of its blemishes were white and easy to colour match. The violet was really in very good condition, and what finally persuaded me to leave it as it is was the surprising discovery that my mudguards of choice, the Blade Runner Trek Reflex, produced by Axiom, came in a colour which went with the violet. These units are very nicely made in two tones and feature plastic end caps on the stays. No more bits of sharp wire sticking out. As you can see, I also bought a very nice Axiom rear rack. I really like their stuff. It might not be the absolute best, but it all works fine and is good value for money. Another nice touch on the fenders are the splash guards on the ends. Also being part of the Norco Empire, these additions kept things in the family. Just a word about the forks, which I think possess very graceful lines. The dropouts are forged and neatly fitted, and the forks also feature a slightly unusual fork crown, or rather lack of one. It's similar to a mountain bike unicrown, but much neater. If we pan around the bike, you can see how elegant the lug work looks. And at the rear hub, here too, the dropout quality and integration with the frame, I think is, is quite remarkable for a bike in this price category. The front wheel ended up with the silver open sport. I was too impatient to wait for a black one which was on back order. The machine sidewalls are remarkably well finished and contain within them 700 by 32 mm Panaracer Pacella tyres, a type that I have used for years. The hub is a Shimano 105 which I had on hand and I must say I find the appearance of the complete wheel very attractive. Maybe I should mention the mounting of the twist grip gear changer. 
Initially I had it mounted on the bar end and for this I used a cut down broken profile time trial bar. I found that the diameter of the silver portion with the taper clamp nut on the end was three quarters of an inch and the diameter of the black bar was seven eighths of an inch which matches the internal diameter of the grip shifter. I just added a couple of self tapping screws to secure the silver to the black portions, tightened up the nut just like tightening up a stem and it worked perfectly. Eventually I decided that on balance I would prefer to have the shifter on the stem riser. This was even easier. I just got hold of an old three quarter inch mountain bike bar end, cut off the curved end, mounted it on the three quarter inch stem riser, slid the shifter onto the seven eight bar end and tightened it out. Perfect. The resulting cable was about one foot shorter than before and the cable no longer got caught in things. Here is the final cockpit layout. You may have noticed already that uh, I managed to get hold of some bluey violety bar tape that matches. Also visible is a shorter stem of 6mm that I fitted together with a wireless cat eye computer. Note also the campy record brake lever positions. The mechanical advantage is way better compared with having to reach over or under the hoods to brake as is the case with normal drop bars. In fact the brakes coupled with the beautifully finished rim sidewalls give excellent and progressive braking. Another advantage is that in headwinds the hand position on the hoods is closer together about 12 inches versus about 17 inches with the drop bar giving a smaller frontal area. That being said even after many kilometers I'm still not completely sold on the moustache bars the hoods tend to be too far away, the drops too close and the bar ends too far apart. That's 53 centimetres. In fact, I did revert to drops for a short period but didn't like the anatomic bend profile. To conclude, one or two additional features might be of interest. For any gear heads, the chainwheel has 42 teeth and the rear sprocket 19. This gives a gear range between 30 to 90 inches which suits me fine and of course there are no duplicates. Nexus sprockets are easily available in various sizes and cost $8 each. They are retained by an easily removable circlip and are also compatible with Sturmy Archer internal hubs. The frame mounted tool bag is yet another Axim product. The reason for the location is to permit a rear rack bag to be fitted. This one is extremely commodious and will easily accommodate enough kit for two overnights. Axim lost out here. This is a Europe bound product which I picked up in a sale at a bike show. The nicely made green fuel stand which I fitted is perhaps the optimum for carrying lighter loads on the rear. However I particularly like them because they don't interfere with pedal rotation. Although I spent far more on this project than I normally do, the outcome is very satisfying and I now have a virtually new machine which will last for years. It steers and handles more like a racing bike and its sprightly performance permits very respectable speeds to be maintained without undue effort.